Today's webinar session is on the basics of business licensing for those in the durable medical equipment field. We're diving into the essentials of compliance that are crucial for anyone in this line of business. Whether you're a newcomer or a seasoned provider, there's plenty of valuable information to explore. Today's agenda includes defining what durable medical equipment is, understanding the regulatory landscape, navigating the application processes, and identifying potential challenges. We aim to provide a comprehensive overview of the industry's regulatory environment, which can be beneficial even for those already established in the field. Let's start by clarifying what durable medical equipment entails. Essentially, this refers to medical items that are designed to last. Unlike single-use products, these items can endure repeated use. They're typically used for medical reasons, to support recovery or manage health conditions. These products are not generally useful for someone who isn't dealing with illness or injury, and they can be operated at home without the need for a hospital setting. However, definitions can vary. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services have specific criteria for what they consider durable medical equipment, but states and other bodies may have their definitions and requirements, so it's crucial to check local regulations to ensure compliance. Moving on, how are suppliers regulated? At the federal level, manufacturers and distributors must register with the Food and Drug Administration. This involves keeping track of where products originate and how they are altered before reaching the end user. If you're a manufacturer or initial distributor, you'll definitely need to register. Wholesale distributors might not need to register federally, but it's best to verify your specific situation. State regulations play a significant role too. Most states require licenses to sell durable medical equipment. The specifics of these licenses can vary considerably, so it's important to understand what is needed in each state you operate in. Localities might only be concerned with basic business licenses based on your business presence. But again, checking specific requirements is crucial. Determining what kind of license you need involves answering several key questions. Consider whether your product is classified as durable medical equipment under state laws. Is your product prescription-based? Are you operating within the state or shipping from outside? Are you selling wholesale or directly to consumers? Each of these factors can influence the type of license you need. If you're already licensed as a mail-order pharmacy or wholesale drug distributor, you might wonder if you need a separate license for durable medical equipment. Sometimes yes. In other instances, exemptions exist but you'll need to ensure your current license reflects your new activities. Next, think about whether you plan to bill Medicare or Medicaid, as this could impact how you're regulated. Accreditation from recognized bodies can sometimes ease the licensing process too. Once you've identified the required license, the application process involves several steps. You'll need to prepare and submit the proper forms, possibly show proof of financial stability and insurance and sometimes undergo inspections. Application fees can vary significantly, so be prepared for this cost as well. Finally, maintaining compliance is an ongoing process. Be aware of renewal dates, any changes in your business that might need reporting, and ensure all your documentation is up to date. Keeping on top of these requirements will help you avoid any disruptions in your licensing status. In today's session, we're diving into the nitty gritty of managing licenses for your business, especially if you're dealing with durable medical equipment. It's crucial to know what changes might need immediate attention from licensing boards. For instance, if there's a change in ownership or you move your business to a new location, some boards might require you to close your existing license and apply for a new one it's really important to know what your board considers a significant change and how you should notify them to keep everything current and compliant. Staying informed about changes in laws and regulations is equally crucial. For example, recently, West Virginia changed its rules, moving from yearly 
to every two years for certain health and drug-related licenses. Keeping up with these changes means you're ready for any legislative surprises. A few handy resources are websites like Bill Truck 50, where you can search for bills using keywords, or checking out the state licensing board websites and newsletters for updates. From time to time, it's also wise to consider working with compliance firms to stay ahead of legal changes affecting your business. For example, we offer a quarterly digest focusing on the pharma industry, which can also cover durable medical equipment licensing updates. Let's have a quick quiz. What kinds of changes might require you to notify the licensing board? Well, it's pretty much all of the above. Whether it's a simple update like changing officers, or something more complex like starting fresh with a new license, knowing the requirements is essential. In this complex industry, having a reliable system in place for managing these regulatory tasks is vital. Whether you use project management tools or outsource your license management, having a solid protocol helps avoid potential issues. Now let's talk about what happens if you slip up in following licensing laws. Fines and penalties are pretty common and can pile up if you're late with renewals or missed notifications. Even worse, your business might be paused if it's not compliant, which can cost more in lost revenue than just paying a fine. Also, if you miss filing ownership changes on time, it could delay significant business deals. Another severe consequence is having your license revoked. This can seriously impact your business operations. Plus, boards sometimes publish disciplinary actions, making it public knowledge, which can harm your reputation. Non-compliance can damage your brand. And in this industry, negative publicity is definitely not beneficial. Therefore, staying up to date with regulations is crucial to avoid any penalties from the state. Thank you all for sticking around today. Although we only scratched the surface of this nuanced industry, this session serves as a guide to keeping your durable medical equipment, business legal and compliant. Keep an eye out for the Q&A responses in the coming days. Your feedback is valuable, so kindly take a moment to rate the webinar and the materials provided. Thank you for joining us today, and please visit our website at legalregistration.com.